I was just around lots of like people who did music. Like a lot of my friends rap, a lot of my friends um, sing, a lot of my friends, some of my friends make beats. And I just feel like I kind of just stepped into it not knowing, oh yeah, I'm going to be a producer, but just more so like, I'm interested in this, let's just see where it goes. And yeah, I just, when it got into that role, it just happened, I just became a producer. But honestly, I'm just inspired by other music, honestly. Like I just listen to other music and like, if I like it, it's like, I'm like, yeah man, I want to make a song like this or I want to incorporate something like that into a beat or something like that. I, I know you're a rapper, but when do you rap? And you never use a card or we spend any stacks. How could sound so good be so bad for me? She loved me, then the next minute yeah. she mad at me. I grew up in West London, like, like Labrador Grove. So it's close to um, where Nines is from. So I've always kind of known people who are around them kind of thing. And then as I kind of got into the music, um, it's like I just sent him beats kind of thing through one of my friends. And yeah, it's just kind of, that's how I kind of met him. So I basically met him through my friend, basically, yeah. The first mixtape, One Foot In, yeah, I was sending so many beats. I was sending like 100 beats, because Nines knew who I was, he knew I make beats, yeah, but he's like, I was younger, he was, I don't think he really took it serious. Like, it's just like, oh yeah, he's cool, like, he's cool. He's good at making beats, but I, he, I wasn't the guy, like, I wasn't the guy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sending him 100 beats for One Foot In. They all got rejected, like, I don't, not, none of them made it. Like, one of them was about to make it because I didn't know how to structure beats properly. It was all eight bars, eight bars, eight bars. There was no 16 bar verse. It was just eight bars, eight bars, eight bars. So nothing made it, really. And then um, One Foot Out, I got on the album with Stacey Adams, thank God. And the next album now, I produced Rubber Bands. Um, and that got a second, he liked that one because that got a second spot on the album. And then um, now, Crab in a Bucket, um, it's like, I think it's just the, the fact that I was just there, like I just stayed consistent kind of thing. And he just realized like, you know what, this guy might be the guy. So I had one session with him where he was like, oh, I'm looking for a new engineer kind of thing. Like, do you think you can do it? And I was like, yeah, I'll give it a try. So I've engineered a whole session for him. And he was like, you know what? You're, you're gonna help me finish this album. And then he sat me down and he gave me the whole, what's been happening. This is after the mad thing happened as well. So he's told me where he's been, what's been happening. Um, why the album's not out yet and he just gave me the blueprint and we just went with it literally so when i found out that the album went number one i was in the studio with a couple of producers i was with prod walks i was with jb free of mine um coleman everyone was like carlos it went number one i'm like nah man and i'm seeing tweets from like snoochie sly i'm seeing tweets from a lot of people like oh congratulations for getting number one and i was like nah man they don't know man they don't know man and then I even saw the picture with Nines like holding the plaque and I was like, nah man, like it might not be real yet, man. And then I had to press refresh on the page and see it's like actually on the top of the list, like crabs in a bucket. I was like, raw, like it was crazy because it's like we really recorded the whole album like just on my laptop, mixed the whole album on my laptop. I produced uh, two of the beats on the, um, on the album as well. Like it's just crazy. It, sh it showed me like how, like how uh, powerful uh, that that what we do is like music production is like you can really like go number one you know what I'm saying I never thought we was gonna go number one even nights he was like if I get a top five I'm happy you know what I'm saying but it went number one I was gassed I was too gassed way too gassed so the first thing I did was I started off with the sample itself which is cut close don't change so I was just playing it the sample so I'm just listening to the song I'm just keep playing it and then I found this part so I took that part and I chopped it so then we got the intro I sped it up a little bit Um, I pitched it down just before it drops. But I, I'm not gonna lie, that wasn't anything like, there was no reason I did that other than to make my beat, beat tag to stand out. So the first thing that was playing was the sample, of course. I put um, I put it through a, f a flanger to take off the top end just so that it's more um, like warmer. <laughs> Cool, so um, once I had got the loop from the sample that I liked, I started by adding the drums 
So I started off with the claps because I feel like it kind of glues together the whole drum pattern. So I always usually start with the claps. After I added the clap, I added a little open hat. Just give it a little, a little bit of a swing. Hi hats. Now we got a little groove going. So I just added a little hi hat roll. Little percussion. Just a little, um, whatever that's called, a little clip, a little cup, cup, cup. A smooth snap, I don't know what it's called. Then I add a little shake, a little too. It just adds to the swing, it's just all about the swing for me. From there, I added the kicks. like the way the kick boom boom and the hi-hats I kept the drums very very simple because I just felt like the sample was so like such a nice sample I didn't want to overcrowd it and also if you listen to the sample itself there's actually drums in the sample that I can't um you can't get rid of them so after the drums I added the bass so this is the bass line So just moving on now, that's pretty much the gist of the whole beat. But then I've just added extra little sample chops on top of that, like um, pitched high, pitched low. Um, I chopped the sample in certain places. So that's just for the background. Like I just added all those like kind of chops, high pitch, low pitch. It just adds to the whole feel. Like I just feel like it, it, it kind of differentiates, you know, between the um, different parts of the song. After all of that stuff's happened, all together, um, it sounded like this. And yeah, that's, that's how I made it. That's how I made Don't Change for Nines, Future and Northside Benji.